Previously on the bill. Whoa! Maybe we should take value of time. If I'd known that you needed help. What I need is my daughter back. You got the job. Congratulations, D.I. Nixon. Thanks, Carl. That's what I planned for you this evening. Uh, no. Oh, go on, you know you want to. Go on. Dutch. Go on, then. What have you got planned for you this evening? I'm not telling you. It's a surprise. Oh, yeah, it's surprises. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It's your 50th. Oh, is that when you get all sensible and start going to the ballet? Don't you knock it until you've tried it. Now that you managed to stop yourself from shouting, he's behind you. I just thought of you, now go on, sit down. All right, come on, the party's over. Yeah, of course. Right, the old Bon estate. Now, as you know, most of the estate is already in the hands of the redevelopers, but in two weeks' time, the remaining residents will be evicted. Now, we will be there to keep the peace, but we're not going to make many friends, are we? <laughs> However, we can make life a little bit easier for us if we tackle the rise in low-level crime on the estate. it will stop them seeing us as bailiffs in blue. Now, I've tasked Sergeant Ackland to organise the foot patrols, all right, June? Yeah, Reg and Tony, you're going to be with me. And, Roger, as a special treat, you can be with a birthday boy today. <laughs> Got anything planned for tonight? Uh, no. I can do without the fuss, to be honest. Sarge? Oh! oh. What's he trying to do? Kill us? Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 1. Near miss with car at school on Wellstead Street. Now for Fiesta, partial index X ray 362. <sighs> Great. Look lively, where's your sense of adventure? Around right here, and that's for sure. Yeah, it's a shame they're redeveloping this place, sir. Oh, I've grown rather fond of it, over here. Yeah, well, time waits for no man or woman. Yeah. Right, Reg, you do that block. Tony, we do this one. What a ghost town, this place. What's your name? Mickey Mouse. Very funny. Is that your car? Nope. No, I didn't think it would be. Thieving scuzz bought. His name's Devon Dealey. Sounds like an horse's name if you ask me. About time he was shot too. Thank you, sir. Right. So, what are you doing in there then, Devon? I'm a plumber. I was called out. To do what, exactly? Plum. There's nothing in there. Mum. I'm on a job for the new owners. He's on the take, slimy little leech. All right, sir, we can deal with this. Your name is, mister? Hold Git Harris. Hey, 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 hey. Calm, everybody calm down. Right. Your owner said I could strip the place. Everything needs chucking out, him included. OK, so who shall I ring at the developers to check that you're telling the truth? I oh, can't remember his name. Very convenient. Well, he's the head of piping. Head of piping? <laughs> yeah, that's it. What, do you know him? No, but I do know that I'm arresting you on suspicion of theft. Hello, bleeding Louia. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which should open the line. Car scene pulling up outside a cafe on Shipley Street. Where are you Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 2 1, Saturday. We're meant to be going to the Auburn. Yes, so we tell Sergeant Adam that we've been delayed. Apparently the drivers that go up there in the white t-shirt and the black leather jacket eating full of English. Is that your car? Well, the little white one. Yeah, well, it's parked all right, isn't it? Were you driving it this morning? I guess I was, yeah. Then you cut me up outside the school on Wellstead Street. All oh, right, yeah. What's your name? Alan Jones. You got any ID? 
No, I'm me, no. Well, Mr. Jones, I'm arresting you for dangerous driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind if I finish my toast first? Yeah. I do. Up you get. I had a car up my tailpipe. I saw you late. I thought I could make it. Honestly, it would have been more dangerous if I jammed my brakes on. I took a punt. We've all done it. I don't remember taking a punt being in the highway code, do you? No, Sarge. No. And I also don't remember anyone being right behind you. Really? Could be right. Look, the thing is, I'm having a bit of woman trouble, right? I was meant to be somewhere and I was actually somewhere else, if you get my meaning. So who was your mate in the car? Your mistress? <laughs> no. All right, I admit it, it was dangerous driving. Charge me, do whatever it is you do. Let's just get it sorted. Don't want to waste any more of your time. I don't believe a word of it. And I also don't like the fact that he thinks he can put the wool over my eyes. But I've checked. Cheers. He's clean and so's the car. We'll do a bell check on him before we release him. He's already caught for dangerous driving. That's enough, isn't it? It seemed pretty helpful to me. Yeah, too helpful. So get yourself round to the address that he gave us and make sure he is who he says he is, all right? You sure? I'm not in the mood to be arguing with so. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, fantastic. Listen, was, um, was that singing on your idea? Yeah, I thought it'd be a bit of fun. I just wish you'd ask me first. You mean, like, is it OK if we surprise you on your birthday? Are you in a bad mood or something? Look, I don't give a damn about your birthday, am I? Then what is it? It's nothing. Of course I haven't given anyone permission to steal piping from the flats. But I still don't want to bother pressing charges. Yes, but we're trying to clamp down on this sort of thing. Yeah, I appreciate that. We had nothing but vandalism since we bought the flats. But if we press charges on everything, I'd be in here 24-7. The flats are coming down anyway. The kid's doing us a favour. Yes, but by pressing charges, you see, you're giving out a signal. No offence, Sergeant, but I've enough on my plate without worrying about petty crime. That's your job, isn't it? And now I've told you who he is, and I'm the fool that married him. Can you tell me what he did? He committed a driving offence, Mrs Jones. Well, that doesn't surprise me. He's a terrible driver. I can't just check that he gave us the right car index, X362UYM. That's the one. Good to know he's got something right. He's meant to be out getting a job, you know, not getting arrested. You send him back here and I'll give him what for. Will do. Sorry to have taken up so much of your time. 54 from 275. Alan Jones checks out at that address, Sarge. Oh, good morning, dear Nixon. Morning, Stuart. Governor. Okay. You ready to put us in our place? You think I need to? <laughs> That is a lovely suit you're wearing, by the way. Thank you, Detective Sergeant Turner. Oh, be warned. It's been rearranging the furniture. Very thanks, Shui. <clears throat> yep. You don't have to knock, Sam. It's your office as well now. Force of habit. So, what are we working on? What's live at the moment? Um, got an immigration scam working out of Gilroy's bar. Investigation into underage sex at Deansgate Comp and I'm madly trying to get bodies behind this Safer Streets campaign. Right. So, what do you want help with? Well, they're the ones I'm heading up. I thought you might like to get your teeth in some mispers. Right. Okay. Fine. I hear there's a gathering to remember Amy Tennant to coincide with the anniversary of her going missing. We doing anything with that? Well, it's a private family matter. I'm going to go, but there's nothing for CID to do. Isn't that a missed opportunity? One year on, we could remind the public of what happened. I think we have to put the needs of the family first. They want to move on. We should respect that. Anyway, listen, I'm late for a meet on this Gilroy scam. I'll catch you later. Right, Mr Jones, that is you released. You will in due course receive a summons asking you to appear at the magistrate's court on the charge of dangerous driving. And account yourself lucky, you could have killed someone. Right out and again, I promise. Sarge, Roger's looking for you. He's at the front desk. Right, OK, might be a minute. Right, you. The bad news is the developers deny any contact with you whatsoever. You don't believe those scumbags, do you? Good news is they don't want to prosecute. Nice people, developers. So, um, does that mean you get to keep the pipe in there? How can I help? Uh, Sarge, this is Sarah Jones. 
Hello, um, we've just bowed your husband. I'm afraid we didn't. Well, this is Alan Jones. I'm sorry you've lost me. Our car was stolen this morning. Looks like we've been had. I was carjacked at the lights on Gunner Street. What time is this? Just after nine. Why didn't you report it straight away? That's what I said. I was shaken. I, I felt a bit stupid. Right. How did it happen? This bloke just opened the car door and pulled me straight out. Didn't you have your belt on? Um, no. It's OK. What did this bloke look like? Uh, don't really know. Well, was he black, white? What was he wearing? White, I think. I can't remember what he was wearing. It all happened so quick. A door open, out and off. Was he on his own? I think so. Were there any other cars around? No. Well, no one that stopped. Oh, I feel so stupid. That's not your fault. It's just a shame we haven't got more information. If you could remember something, we might get our car back. I know. It's supposed to be a happy time for us with the baby, but it's been one bad thing after another lately. What Sarah means is, I lost my job a couple of months back. Don't worry, we are going to get whoever did this to you. We don't need to make a big song and dance, do we? Yes, we do. Of course we do. We want to get our car back. Roger, CCTV of Gunner Street. Right, sir. Right, let's go through it again. Oh. Would you got one now, then? We thought we ought to let you know the developers have decided not to take any further action against Mr. Dealey. That's just typical, isn't it? Is this to do with that tow rag developer, Duncan? He made the final decision, yeah. Of course. As long as he gets his money, he don't give a damn about his place. Show away the baby. What? Oh, hello. Hello. Um, Poppy. Poppy. This is one of the officers that helped me when the bailiff turfed me out. Oh, right. He must be the exception to the rule, then. Thanks, my father-in-law. So, you've had a baby since I saw you last? Yeah, she's inside. Come in and say hello if you like. She's upstairs. Hopefully she's sleeping. Oh. Oh. This is a very nice room. Nothing wrong with the flats inside. It's just the outsides that are going to pot and smack and crack. Oh, is, uh, is that your son? Yeah. He was killed in Iraq. Never got to see his daughter. I'm so sorry. My son was born through there. He took his first steps in here. And he used to watch television with his mate in the house that Dealey was ransacking. See? Everywhere I look, ghosts, not my son, my wife. It's a blessing she's not here to see what's going on. I take it the new flats aren't an option then? I wouldn't live in one of those things if you paid me. Which is what they're trying to do, offering us 30 pieces of silver to move on. Look, I can't do anything about the evictions, but I can promise you that we will make her presence felt on this estate in the meantime. <laughs> like you did with Dealey. But then why should you bother? Duncan is never going to press charges. Worse the estate is the sooner he thinks to get rid of people like me. Your granddaughter is beautiful. Yeah, she gets that from me. Shame she's going to be made homeless in two weeks, innit? Right. I've got something that would definitely cheer you up. Ta da! Thanks. Well, open it now. I'm up to me eyes. Oh, come on, you can switch off for two minutes on your birthday. Open it. You've bought me a dress? Yeah. And chocolate body paint? Yeah, I thought we could have a bit of fun. You want me to wear the dress and cover myself in chocolate? No, it's for me to wear and for you to enjoy. Well, chocolate gives me headaches. Well, I guess I'll just have to wear the dress then. Right? I'll see you later. I don't think you've got the legs for it, Sarge. Um, it's, look, it's a fancy dress thing, Rog. Um, <clears throat> what can I do you for, mate? I'm still trying to locate the CCTV from Gunner Street, but our dangerous driver's fingerprints have just come back. His name is Carew, Darren Carew. He's got previous for fraud, and we've got an address on Myatt Street. Right, well, let's get over there. How are you getting on, Reg? 
Well, not too well as it goes, son. Oh. Place is a blooming war zone. Come and have a look at this lot. There was a few more of them, but they'd have ran off or crawled up the walls. What were we supposed to do with this lot? We could nick them. Oh, no, I tried that, son. I couldn't get enough of them to stand up on their feet. I've got a much better idea. Uh, Mr Duncan? Yeah, it's Sergeant Ackland here from Sunhill. Um, could you meet me, please, at Thornton House on the Oldbourne as soon as possible? Yes, it is very important. No, it won't wait. Thank you. Sarge, couldn't you tell him over the phone he was the proud owner of a drug house? I want him to see this mess for himself. I'm very keen today. Yeah, well, it's a big day. Was it Smithy's birthday? No. I've got an appointment to see Inspector Gold. I, look, I don't want her hearing about this until I've spoken to her, but I've decided to take early retirement. Yeah, yeah, Rod and I have talked about it, and now seems as good a time as any. Anyway. Come on. Hi, James. Hi. Good, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. How are you? Getting there. Well, you look well. Thanks. I'm back at work and me and Ruth are talking again, so that's good. That's great. What's up? Do you fancy a cup of tea? Yeah, okay. Sure. I was very interested to hear about the event you've got coming up to remember Amy. Yeah, we thought it'd be a good idea to get family and friends together. You know, remember happy times. Like I said to Neil, maybe you can get some closure. I understand that. I suppose real closure would be knowing what happened. Perhaps. A year on now, what are the chances of that? I'm sure you remember the reconstruction we did on the day Amy disappeared. I know that was heartbreaking for you. But the public did give us some details that really helped. Maybe the anniversary of Amy's disappearance could be an opportunity to jog the public's memory again. Well, I'd like the celebration just to remind us of happier times, you know? Wouldn't it be better to know what happened to your daughter? Yeah, but I... You know, I don't, I don't want to do another reconstruction. No, no, we wouldn't do that. What I'm suggesting is we have the press there. We have a low police presence so we can gather any new information the public might have. I don't know. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I need to think about that. Of course. Hi, right, James. Hi, Neil. What are you doing there? Uh, D.I. Nixon was just talking about Amy's anniversary. I think it's a good idea. She was talking about a small police presence, maybe asking some questions, give it one more push. Maybe she's right. Well, I don't think it is a good idea, really. You know, it might bring a lot of emotions back to the surface. Oh, you don't think we should do it? No, I don't. I haven't really discussed it properly. Right, um, but I'll, I'll uh, have a chat with Ruth and see what she says. Thank you, James. Would you show James out, please? <clears throat> what the hell do you think you're doing? You gave me the mispers. Amy's a misper, isn't she? And why didn't you talk to me about it? I did. No, we talked about the get-together. We didn't talk about you going behind my back to James. Well, maybe we work differently. This is a case that isn't closed. I saw an opportunity and I didn't go behind your back. I know this case better than anyone. Well, maybe you're too close to it. I admit I've got a close relationship to James, but I don't think that has ever clouded my judgment. Look, I just don't want to get his hopes up all over again. And I'm sorry I didn't talk it through properly with you. But doesn't he have the right to hope that we can find out what's happened to his daughter once and for all? This better be good. Not a great solicitor. Yeah, you're going to need one. Cozy in there, isn't it? No. It's a health hazard and you own it. So it's your responsibility to get it cleaned up. After two weeks, there won't be anyone left on the estate. Oh, this can't wait two weeks. There are residents still living here who are at risk. Little kids, for example? My contractors are tied up. Oh. Well, I mean, if word of this gets round and then the press gets a whiff. I can't it. have that. No, exactly. You can't have that. So, I want that hellhole and all your other empty properties cleaned up and sealed up, like this one. If you say so. 
In the meantime, I'll get hold of the drug shelter and see if they can deal with some of the drug addicts. I don't want them turfed out on the street. Remember, you won't clear the last of the residents of this estate without our cooperation. So I suggest you give us a bit of help in the meantime. I'll get it sorted. Thank you. What are we going to do without you? Let's go and tell Frank Harris the good news. Frank, please! Stop it! Get off! 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 Get he sold me his car this morning. I bought it off him. I paid in cash. Can you prove that? Didn't give me a receipt, if that's what you mean. If you bought his car, you'll have the V5. I just posted it to Swansea. You can check with them in a day or so. No problem. So why lie earlier? I've got points on my license. Another three and I'm done. So why buy a car if you can't use it, right? So there you go. I was trying it on. So now I'll be disqualified. You win. So is that it, then? No. Mr. Crew, it's not it. We're not releasing you until we've confirmed that you didn't steal Mr. Jones's car. Come on, mate. What have I got to do? It was just an angina attack. Oh. Next time, we might not be so lucky. They're putting him on medication, so... We're going to have to take a statement, I'm afraid. Mm, he's still a bit groggy. Can't it wait? Yeah. Yeah, we could talk to Dealey first, I suppose. What'll happen? Well... They're both accusing each other of assault, so it'll probably end up in court. <sighs> Frank can't cope with a court case. The stress is killing him as it is. I can't lose someone else. Do you know what the best thing would be? If Frank took a leaf out of Duncan's book and withdrew his allegations against him. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? You'll never get him to agree to that. No, but you could. You talk to Frank, we'll talk to Dealey. Nothing. Alan Jones wasn't carjacked at these lights. He said it was around nine. I've watched between eight and ten. Nothing. Maybe got the location wrong. No, I've double-checked with him. He didn't. He's lying, and that means your friend Carew might be telling the truth. And Carew's solicitor's getting heavy. What, on the grounds that his client is fully cooperating and that we have no evidence against him? I know. Picky or what? Right, Mr Carew, that's you, Bell. Again. You will in due course receive us. Yeah, yeah, you've already told me that. You are required to produce a valid V5, MOT and insurance certificate for the Ford Fiesta showing you as the owner within the next seven days, do you understand? Yeah. Can I ask you something? Next time you even think of arresting me, make sure of your facts first. Show him out, PC Valentine. found the car? Not exactly, no. I'd rather my wife wasn't involved in any of this, if that's okay. That's your business, Mr Jones. All we want from you is the truth about what happened this morning. But think very carefully. Because any more lies out of your mouth and you'll be arrested for wasting police time. Who is it? Um, no one. Um, oh. What's going on? I'm sorry, love. What have you done? I saw this ad on auctioneditions.net. You know, the online auction, auction website, yeah. This better not be another harebrained scheme to earn money from the internet. If you could just tell us what happened, Mr Jones. I saw a very smart V-plate Mercedes on the website. Um, the listing quoted six grand, but they said they'd take offers for cash, so I emailed them saying I'd give them five, and they accepted. But well, I reckoned I could sell it on for at least seven. I don't believe this. They set up the meeting place. Um, the car park in the Golding Industrial Estate. There's no CCTV there. So you took £5,000 in cash to an industrial estate in the middle of nowhere? I didn't know what was going to happen. Which was? Two men got out the Mercedes. Um, really friendly at first. They showed me the car and asked me if I had the money. When I got the cash out, it all kicked off. 
They made me hand over the money and the car keys. I didn't have a choice. So they drove off in your car and theirs, leaving you there? You lost our car and our savings. I'm sorry. If you're telling us the truth this time, you'll still have the logbook. Why the hell didn't you tell us about this earlier? I gave them our address when I first emailed him. I think they must have checked it out because they said they knew where I lived and that my wife was pregnant. No sign of Carew at his flat. Now there's a surprise. He's not going to make the same mistake again, is he? No, I'm just going to have to find another way again. Sarge, we should hand this over to CID. Oh, you got any eggs you want me to suck? Look, I will in a minute. I just need to look something up. Coffee? No, look, I'm working. Good luck. How's it going? Well, it's like Piccadilly Circus in here. Oh, I love you too. I'm sorry, I was just, just having one of those days. Yeah, it's your birthday. Tell me about it. Now, kezzy has got some big night planned and, well, it's the last thing I want. Well, I thought you two were having fun. Yeah, we were. Well, what do you want to do tonight? A quiet night in, a, a drink with the boys. Mind you, after the way today's panning out, what I'd really like to do is go down to the gun club and shoot some holes in some targets. Oh, you old romantic, you. It's probably not the best time, but anyway, happy birthday. Well, go on, it won't bite. It's not two tickets for the Nutcracker Suite. Go on. Oh, it's lovely. Thanks. All right, well, enjoy whatever it is you end up doing. Mum, sorry. Um, are you free? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Happy birthday, Smithy. Gov. I've just tracked down a car selling scam on an internet auction site. Buyers are asked to make a cash offer for a Mercedes. Don't tell me. They turn up and they're robbed. Yeah, and then they get their own car and it's part of the bargain. This is the ad a victim answered shortly before getting done over in the car park this morning. And this ad, I've just found. They're both selling the same car. That's hard to tell. They look the same, but they're shot from different angles. If you look at the words on the adverts, they both spell immaculate with one M. It's a common enough mistake, surely? I don't think so. Look, a newly registered seller with no feedback, so in other words, no trustworthy previous transactions, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Well, especially since they want to meet up in a car park to hand over a bundle of cash. That's just it. Now, I've spoken to the latest bidder via the auction site, and he's already arranged to meet the seller at Gadsden Hill Road. When? Three o'clock this afternoon. In an hour and 45 minutes. And he's happy for us to take over. It's a bit sudden. Could you not have flagged this up a bit earlier? I've just found out. And the guy behind it, Darren Carew, I'd really like to get him. OK, why not? Do you want to head this one up, Stuart? Sure. OK, you'll need bodies and we don't have much time, so I need a briefing in 20 minutes. I'd still like to be involved. I don't have a problem with that. Me neither. Oh, it's Carew, the guy that you've already released twice today. Might be. No time lucky, then. Well, I can't say that I'm surprised. It's been on my mind for a while that Rod and I have talked it through and now seems like the right time. You know I'm supposed to change your mind, don't you? I think the force will manage without me. It's not the force I'm worried about. Please, don't make this any more difficult than it already is. But you know your pension will be a whole lot healthier if you just hung on for a couple more years. Yeah, but I wouldn't be. You know, Rod's got his retirement money. We'll be OK, really. I feel this is the right time. Don't you? I'll put all this in writing, but I wanted to tell you first. Thank you. I'll do the paperwork as soon as I get it. Right, well, if you'll excuse me. I've got a right little charm at interview. OK, Devin, I want you to drop the charges. Why would I drop the charges against old Git Harris? Because you wound him up and you assaulted him too. The guy's a psycho. He attacked me. If you saw him, he completely lost it. Do you know, I've been looking at your past record, Devon. <laughs> Considering you're a young man, you crammed in an awful lot. Lice for a living. What have we got here? Theft, taking a vehicle without permission, shoplifting, assault, criminal damage. I mean, it's a positive A to Z of youth crime. At some point, the judges, who I think have been pretty kind to you so far, are going to wonder what you're doing still out on the street. 
give it this way. Who would you have more sympathy for? A hardened young offender robbing an estate or a law-abiding grandfather whose son died for his country? I mean, I couldn't agree more with you that life is for living, but what's the point of living it inside a prison? How are you feeling? Much better, thanks. Great. Oh, well, I've got some good news. Scumbag's in prison already, is he? Mr. Dealey has decided to withdraw his allegation. That's the good news? So he should. It was only a clip round the ear. Frank, calm down. I know you're in codes. She's already had a go at me. And no, I will not drop charges. I can't talk any sense into him. It's not about sense. It's about justice. Frank's got a theory. What, about Dealey? No. About a development. I've heard things. What things? Someone on the council took backhanders from the developers, and I'm going to prove it. If taking that little toe rag Dealey to court is going to let me make a noise about it, that's fine by me. No offence, Frank, but honestly, I don't think anything you can say is going to make any difference. You know, sometimes you just have to move on in life. Except a new flat. So am I sold to the devil? I know it's hard for you, leaving behind, what, a lifetime of memories, but what choice have you got? I can fight on. You're not well enough. I've got to do something. My son died fighting for what he believed in. The least I can do is the same. You didn't open your mouth to this lot about making it a career about, did you? I might have mentioned it. Thank you very much, Roger. I'd just be grateful I didn't mention the dress. I booked us dinner at a sushi restaurant for tonight. What did you do that for? Um, to treat you on your birthday away. Oh, well, I'm not that keen on fish, and well, I like my food cooked. Anything else? OK, everybody. We've just had intelligence from Uniform on a car selling scam. Darren Carew and an unknown associate have been setting up fake car sales. Now, the latest deal is due to take place on a disuse site on Gasden Hill Road. D.S. Turner will be leading this op. OK, so prospective car buyers turn up with their thousands only to find themselves robbed of both their savings and their car. So we want to do a simple sting operation. Mickey and Kezia will be the stool pigeons who are looking to buy some smart wheels. When the deal goes down, we'll have two IRVs positioned to covering the exit routes. What about visuals? I'll be on the ground keeping everyone in radio contact. So you take the nod from me. No one moves without my say-so. OK, any questions? Right, that's it. Off you go. James Tennant's come back in. He wants to see us both. Hi, James. Do you want to come through? No, it'll only take a minute. I've made my decision. Listen, Neil, you've been great to me. And, uh, you know, it really matters what you think. But uh, I know what you mean about dragging it all up. And in some ways, it's the last thing I want. But if I don't let the press do a piece and let you guys ask around, then I'll never know what might happen and um, never be able to forgive myself, whatever the consequences. So... Well, I understand. As long as you thought it through. I have, yeah. And and thank you. You're welcome. We'll be in touch, James. OK, thanks. All right, good. See you. Well, I hope you know what you're doing. I don't see what your problem is. We gave James a choice and he made his decision. I get that. I just feel ambushed, that's all. Well, no offence, but this isn't about you. No, but it's important that we're up front with each other and don't undermine each other on cases. Or fob each other off with Miss Purrs. OK, point taken. Do you want a coffee? I'd love one. How's it going? On a scale of one to ten? Minus six. We got Smithy for his birthday. It's private. Yeah. We had a whip round. Oh, very funny. All units. We've got a car matching the description slowing up. Stand by. Standing by. Yeah, 
Yeah. You, Andy? Yeah, your girlfriend. Okay. Just wait for the cash to be handed over in the car keys. Here it is. What do you think? Yeah, it looks right from the outside. Andy, I love the colour. Take a look inside if you want. Yes. You can check the mileage. It's all kosher. You got the cash? Yeah. Well, I'm sure we can do business then. Yeah, I like it. It's a deal. Yeah. Count it. Don't worry, I will. Right, Nicky's just handed over the cash. Got a V5? Yeah, yeah, just a moment. Hey, fellas, getting home then. It was bus stops a while away, isn't it? We're not going by bus, Andy. Well, I can give you a lift, I guess. No need. We're going by car. I, I don't get it. Your car keys or your girlfriend's going to need facial reconstruction. What? Hey! <laughs> Carew's got the keys. Go. Well, no one's hurt, at least. Indian 99's on route, Sierra 2's in pursuit. So, at least that's something. No one mentioned guns, mate. Yeah, tell me about it. So where was Darren Carew going to go? I don't know. Oh, come on, you must have some idea. I don't know much about him. He's just a bloke I met in the pub. So how do you get in contact with him, then? I don't. He contacts me. What? Like the Scarlet Pimpernel? We've got your mobile. We could access it and get Carew's number that way. Be my guest. But that takes time, so we thought you'd like to speed things up for us. Why would I do that? Did you know that Carew had a gun? No. I didn't. Then it's already every man for himself then, isn't it? By pulling a gun, Carew might have just put a few years on your sentence. If I was you, I'd want to distance myself from him as much as possible. So a telephone number would be nice. But his whereabouts would be even better. The IRV lost them around here just before they could hook up with air support. So basically, they got away. Great, so no signs since. Tennyson coughed. We got a number and a possible location for Carew. It's the Green Archer on Carbis Street. Now, the landlord gives him a room to hole up in when he needs to lie low. So all we need is confirmation from the telephone unit that he's in there. Good. We'll need CO19 this time. Smithy, do you want to sort that? Gov. Street. If we confirm he's in the Green Archer, I'll go in and check him out. He doesn't know who I am. We'll need you in phone contact at all times. Of course. Uh, just so we're clear, who's leading this investigation? We're equal rank, Sam. Why don't we do it together? That should be fun. Carew's not getting away this time. We hope. Right, he's up at the bar on his own. Six members of the public. One bar staff. He's making an anxious call on his mobile. And he's getting drunk by the looks of it. Oi! He's very jumpy. OK, the item we're concerned with it's in the inside pocket of his jacket on the left-hand side. OK. Got that, Sam. Right. The CO19 skipper isn't too happy about storming into the pub. He thinks it'd be better if we sit tight and wait for Carew to come out. It could be days. What if he gets spooked? If one of his goons turns up, sees this, stop pointing guns at the door and calls him. Well, it's only one man. Surely we can get him out. How? Ask him to come out of his hands on his head? Well, yeah, why not? We've got his mobile number. I've interviewed him. I know how he thinks. You've also released him. Twice. Gov. OK. Sam. Smith is going to try and talk him out. 
on his mobile phone. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Sam, what's he drinking and where's the glass? Find the lager. In his hand. Right, everyone turn the radios down. Yeah. You enjoying that pint? Well, I think you've had one too many, don't you? Well, at least too many to dry, so it looks like you're stuck with your ass for a while. Who is this? It's Sergeant Smith from Sun Hill. It's reaching inside his jacket. If you're going to check to see if that gun's still there, I really wouldn't bother, mate. The pub's surrounded by armed officers with high-velocity rifles. They are pointing through every window and they are covering every exit. What do you want? I want you to reach into your pocket and take the gun out. I want you to put it carefully and slowly on the floor under your bar stool. There's only one safe way out of here. And that's through the front door. Strip down to your underpants with your hands on your head. <laughs> and if I don't? Enjoy the point. Because it'll probably be your last. My false move from that bar to be the free time. You've got 60 seconds. Reaching for the gun. <laughs> Looks like we've got ourselves a stripper ground. In the air now. Walk towards me slowly. Look at me. Stand still. On your knees. Do it. Put your hands on your head. Right. On your feet. <clears throat> You're under arrest on suspicion of robbery and attempted murder. Blimey. You went in for a bit. Not so much. You start. Oh, you finally got him then. Well, is it ever in any doubt? Hey, um, we got front and five. If that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. See you, kiss. Uh, do you know where Smithy's got to? Uh, I'm sure he's gone already. Yeah, you said something about having to be somewhere. You can join us if you like. No, no, it's all right. I'll see you later. Cool. I'd try the gun club if I were you. Thanks. Night, Mum. Night. Thinking of anyone in particular? What are you doing here? Oh, you know, I thought I'd come and let off a bit of steam. Would you believe my boyfriend's stood me up? Sorry. But sushi, body paint and a bit of fancy dress. It's just not me. So you, you stood me up because I failed miserably on your birthday present? It's a bit more than that. You and me, I, I, I don't think we're going anywhere. Well, it depends on where you want to go. I wasn't exactly hearing wedding bells. That's what I mean. It, it was supposed to be a bit of fun, and it was. But now, suddenly, we're living together. Well, it's only temporarily until I find somewhere else to be. But is it? I mean, be honest. How hard have you actually tried to find somewhere else to live since moving in with me? We have slipped into a routine relationship that neither of us wanted in the first place. You're absolutely right. 
Is that friends? Sure. Well, do you want to go for a drink or something? No, um, I think I might go back to yours and collect my things, if that's all right. Of course. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your birthday. Thanks. Time on the bill. Did you tell him you thought there was a good chance of getting a lead out of this? I said there was a chance. Get off oh, my ass! Oh, 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 what's going on? She was in Amy's room. She's got no right to be in there. Even if this turns out for the worst, it's not your fault.